Hi, my name is Donald Elchel. I'm a librarian at Newgar Memorial Library. I have a very varied job that involves working at the research center desk, selecting um, books in four different subject areas, uh, conducting library instruction sessions, and many other duties. I also review reference books. I just want to tell you what a reference book is and um, why it is also important to have the book reviewed. First, a definition of a reference book. Um, reference books are usually comprehensive in scope, condensed in treatment, and arranged on some special plan to facilitate the ready and accurate finding of information. This special arrangement may be alphabetical, as in the case of most dictionaries or encyclopedias, chronological, as in historical outlines and similar compends, tabular, as in the case of statistical abstracts. As such, books are used for the finding of single definite facts. Some alphabetical approach to the fact is usually needed, and the book is not itself arranged alphabetically. Works which follow any of these indicated arrangements are reference books, pure and simple, and are not used for consecutive reading. Okay. This is a general book, and people usually read it in, on beaches or elsewhere. This is a reference book, and people don't usually read this at, at the beach or anywhere else. So let's discuss a, a few reference books. Um, let's start with some um, unusual titles. Here's a book called Women's Serial and Mass Murderers, a Worldwide Reference, 1580 through 1990. Now, according to the definition I've just read, it is considered a reference book because of its arrangement, scope, and treatment of the topic. A library user would consult this work, but not read it consecutively. So, it's a reference book, but is it a good reference book? Well, according to Choice Magazine, which is read by acquisition librarians, um, a review appeared that questioned the um, usefulness of this. The first sentence read, there has been a need for a scholarly discussion of the female serial murderer for a long time. This book does not fill that need. Wow. The reviewer certainly is not shy about making his judgment. And then the reviewer mentions numerous problems in just a 200 word review of the book. Um, the book claims to be a worldwide reference, but it just covers America. It's um, written in a sensationalist style. It's not an academic work. It draws many unwarranted conclusions. So this book is really not recommended for an academic library. So you're probably asking, well, why do we have it? Well, actually, I don't know because I didn't select it. And um, I hope that the, if the person who did select it didn't see this review beforehand. Now let's go to another um, intriguing um, reference book, a, a very unusual title. It's called Show Me the Good Parts of the Reader's Guide to Sex and Literature. And I'll just read you a little from um, the introduction about why the um, author compiled this. This work grew out of my experience as a librarian. Patrons frequently would request books that contained what they euphemistically referred to as romantic episodes. Rationalizations emerged as the work progressed. It would save people eye strain. Why not circumvent having to read 500 pages in order to find therein a housekeeper and her master in romantic embrace? Um, it would save the buying public time from be, being cheated by false packaging. Right so what the author did was, um, it's an annotated bibliography of, um, of sex and literature and the author, to save the reader time, indicates the pages where there are good parts. So let me just um, discuss one, one of these um, chapters here, like on fantasy. Hmm. 
Oh, that's that looks like a good book. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not an X-rated video, so uh, let's go on to the next one. But anyway, this looks like a very intriguing uh, reference book. So now going to some more serious works. Not that these before weren't serious. Um, I want to mention um, this two-volume work, A Guide to Congress. It's published by the Congressional Quarterly Press. And it has numerous charts that give um, quick information about Senate impeachment trials, um, the number of appearances of presidents before Congress, and there's um, a very long narrative section. Now, you're probably saying, well, I could find this on Google. And you're right, you could find a lot of this material on Google, but you would get hundreds and hundreds of hits. This two-volume work is very easy to browse, and you could find the material um, quite um, quickly. Um, we don't have this available electronically, but we, we do have it in print. We don't have it electronically yet. And um, I just want to emphasize that um, our reference collection does have a lot of print material that isn't available electronically. And um, the students should really avail themselves of, of this material. Um, here's another um, excellent reference set. It's called the African American National Biography. It's an eight-volume print set that we own, and it covers uh, biographies of Africans, Africans and African Americans who came to this country starting in 1528. Esteban um, arrived in South Florida, in Spanish Florida at that time, and uh, also covers um, many um, contemporary Americans. All in all, there are 4,100 4, individuals covered in this. Now, why is this an outstanding reference work? First of all, the publisher spent a great deal of time finding um, qualified people to write the biographies. Every entry has a bibliography at the end. And all of the uh, biographies have been fact-checked. Most reference book publishers don't um, have the time or the money to pay for fact-checkers. And that the fact that, that the publisher did this indicated their seriousness that they wanted in a, a definitive and authoritative project. Many of the um, biographies found in this work cannot be found in other biographical works. So it's a really unique set. And finally, this um, eight volume set was compiled um, under the supervision of major scholars of African American history, culture, and life. Um, similar to the um, Congress volume, we don't have this currently available um, online. But um, we do have the print set, and you're welcome to use this when you come to the library. The reason I'm um, emphasizing about the print set we have is because many students think everything is on Google. If it's not on Google, then it's available on electronic resources. And I just think it's really important to know that a lot of this material is only available in print as of now, and that you should um, take the opportunity to avail yourself of this. So that's my um, short little introduction to um, reference books, both print and electronic. And um, in the meantime, I'll see you at Revere Beach. <laughs>